Hey, what's up, boxers? This is Zach who's out with Build Box. In this video, I'm going to show you how to add a quick countdown to your game so that the player has a few seconds to register what's going on before the game actually starts. And this is what it's going to look like. So, real quick, I'm going to start the preview over again. And you can see there's a countdown three, two, one, go. And then the game starts. It's really, really simple to hook this up, and I'm going to show you how to do this right now. So I'm going to exit out of my preview real fast. And you'll notice here, this is the first thing you need to do is you need to create a separate world and a separate um, uh, world UI for your mind map, OK? And let me show you how each one of these is set up, OK? So first, this first world UI doesn't have anything in it except for one event observer right here. And you can grab an event observer over here from Logic, and you just grab an event observer and you just drop it in, OK? And then once you've got your event observer inside your UI, you want to change the event type to timeout. OK, that's where you want it to be, timeout. And then for if you want your countdown to be um, three seconds long, um, you can make it 3,000 milliseconds. OK, and then that will make it so it's 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, go. All right, and then you leave the function as default, and you have the pause current world set up, and that's it for the world UI. Now, the next thing you want to do is you want to have your other, your main world here. You want to make sure that there's no movement. There's no uh, movement on the world UI. It'll uh, it should pause uh, the world anyways, but if you have force movement going as well, it's probably going to uh, push it along. So you want to have your force movement set to zero for the min, max, and increase, um, or you could change the time warp down to be zero as well. But you want to make sure that that world is not moving. It's just going to stay there. Okay. Now the next thing you're going to want to do is you want to go into your world and you're going to drop the countdown in for your countdown world. You can drop it down here at the bottom or on the top and uh, you want to drop it in as an object. So I've got my little countdown uh, images right here. I've got uh, just three two, one, and go. And you want to make sure that they're labeled correctly. So the first image is three, then the second is two, and so on. OK? And then you're going to just grab all four of them, and you drop them in as an object type. You can see right here it's an object type. But um, I already have one in there, so I'm going to show you how to set that up. So I've got my countdown object over here. And the main thing that you want to look for is setting up the default animation for this countdown. So I'm going to click Edit right here and open up the Animation Editor. And what you want to do is you want to change the speed to be 0.05. And then you want to turn off looping. You don't want the animation to repeat. And then you want to make the frames just be 20 frames. And then hopefully that will be the right timing with your timeout event observer. And, and make sure, too, that you hook up the countdown world UI to the world that you, the actual game world you want, so that it can start as soon as the countdown's over. Okay, that's how the timeout event observer works. Okay, so what you'll do once you have this all set up is you'll end up with this. Okay, and you've already seen this before. Three, two, one, go, and then the game starts. Okay, it's really simple, but I thought it would be kind of helpful to have a short video explaining how this is done. So I hope you thought this video was useful. If you want to see more videos like this, then please like this video and subscribe to our channel. All right, see you later, boxers. Like and subscribe.